everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's a different time for us. You're not seeing our faces because we're going to be showing you screens and we don't want to risk blocking important information along the way. So uh, different from our usual Emperor of the Fading Suns where we talk about gameplay and game design. We're still talking about game design, but we're going to be focusing on how you can be doing game design as well. Uh, Emperor of the Fading Suns is uh, from the GGDA member Holistic Design, which I've been involved with for one or two years. Okay, more than 20. But uh, there are a lot of good people who've contributed to this. Emperor of the Fading Suns is a very fun math strategy game, big scale, but even it doesn't cover everything. And that's why we included the mod tools. Early on, we helped the modders out with this, going back to the 1990s, but the mod tools were not the easiest to use. So we have modded the mod tools to make them even more uh, accessible. And our last release, that's really what we focused the most on. We made the game stronger, more stable, but really making it more mod capable was the focus. And you have a lot of very easy to use tools now to modify it. And we strongly recommend that anyone interested in game design Start out with modding. Modding is a great way to learn what's involved in game dev on a stable platform, usually. And it shows you what game devs have to consider when they're making a fun game or failing to make a fun game. Thankfully, in Emperor of the Fading Suns, it is a fun game. And you can make it even more fun. Make it more fun along the lines of what you want to have happen. So I'm going to let Zeno introduce himself. This is the creator of the main Emperor the Fading Suns Discord server, and he's been a key part of our development team. So Zeno, take it away. Thanks, Andrew. Well, um, I go by Zeno or Framer or sometimes by my real name. I'm not sure if I should mention that here or not. I suppose it doesn't matter too much, but Zeno is what I'll be calling myself <laughs> in this stream. Um, I've been modding and Fading Sons for many, many years now. Um, <clears throat> I probably started uh, six or seven, eight years ago. And I started playing uh, Emperor Wars, or a variation thereof, and jumped right into multiplayer, which has been sort of my main focus for most of my days. Um, and I found some aspirations that I quickly... Uh, well... I just had to start modding and do my own thing. So uh, I'm pretty knowledgeable in how the game uh, is set up when it comes to mods. And with the new 1.5 patch, there are a couple of things that has made it a lot more easier uh, and more powerful to set up mods. So I'm thinking I'm going to be showing you um, uh, a couple of things, uh, a couple of mods, how to do some simple stuff. Uh, and how everything is set up, so you, you sort of uh, you're kind of organized. So I'm just gonna drag something into the screen real quick, and this is a terrible picture that I decided I needed right before <laughs> um, the stream started. But in any case, here you can see sort of um, a couple of images on the screen here. Don't worry, it looks a bit messy, but in general, this image right here, whoops, is basically just how I always can access the uh, the root folder of the game. I just click here. Manage installation, then show folder. This I will do a lot, all the time. Uh, then we can go and show sort of um, what the GOG Logger itself will do. And it will, by default, be able to play the main game by just clicking here. Or you can also go into um, to additional executables. And then it will launch to uh, other executables, which is the direct task settings for, um, well, playing windowed mode, for instance, and the map editor, which is useful for just having fun. We will be using this in this stream later on. So, um, just a quick introduction on the actual modding system. So, let's just get rid of those for now. <clears throat> the GOG launcher will go into the root folder and find the game executable and the map editor. And so, the root folder which is where we are now, has all these folders in them. And you can see there are DAT files, there are FLC files, which are graphic files, uh, GAL files, which are maps, or rather the Galaxy uh, part of those maps. Uh, you also have uh, a mod folder, which is pretty important. And in essence, each of these folders have 
a couple of different types in them, uh, respective to their own um, folder name. So the dat files is probably the most juiciest of juiciest of them all. This is where you can find all the units, all the structures, uh, the targeting data, uh, the relics, the resource, the economy stuff. It's all in here. Also, the configuration file is probably what uh, is the best example of how, the most easiest thing to do for a modding thing. But we'll get back to that. Um, the modding system is set up right now in 1.5. Uh, before it wasn't the case, but 1.5 brought in a very important and cool change, and that is if you um, if you uh, add a mod folder inside the root slash mod, you can just switch easily between mods at the fly instead of having to create um, copies or override. So this is also what we will, we will be doing this stream right here. We will be switching between mods and we will create our own real quick. So I have a, a bit more than you would have in the start. Don't worry about that. Um, the actual configuration file for the mods are located in the root directory and it's this little file right here mod.ini this is sort of the most <laughs> uh, well the only control surface you have to uh, to specify which mods are being uh, activated or not so right here the mods are off uh, and we will need to turn this to on to enable the modding system and then you can see here, I've sort of outlined a couple of things in different colors. Red is the one we just did. You have to enable mods for it to work. If you would uh, disable it again, it would just give you the vanilla game again. Um, and then the semicolons here are actually, it's sort of like, um, like commenting out in, in programming terms. When you reach this line right here, it will just skip this line if there's a semicolon. So this is how we can set up comments and stuff pretty easy. And then this keyword right here marked in blue specifies that you, we want to activate a specific mod. What is the mod's name? Overhaul 7. Now that again corresponds to the actual uh, mod. So uh, instead of Imperium 1 here, you would instead have Overhaul 7. So I'll show that in the mods folder. Let's see, maybe you can see both of them if I do this. So overhaul seven, all right. And then you can see here that the actual um, uh, folders within my named mod is similar to how the vanilla uh, root folder is set up. So that's pretty the only the only structural thing you need to worry about is uh, one make a folder inside your mod folder and name it whatever you want. Then you uh, set the name of the folder inside the mods folder keyword, and then you of course have to enable the mod. And otherwise, you have to make sure that the um, the uh, hierarchy of um, stuff within the mod folder itself is corresponding to how it would be in vanilla. You can see here there's a lot more, more stuff, if you can see here, in the vanilla game than there is in the mod, and that is because you don't need to include stuff that you have not uh, any desire to change. So I only want to change these stat files, I only want to change um, or add these galaxy files and similarly with with uh, saving and the pc access these are things that i have added and then overwritten because the game will pull from the vanilla game when it when it's missing something so that makes it very easy to switch between mods and add what you need mm. uh, i'll just go really quick through um uh, tools that I use. Um, like you notice here that I have a program called Notepad++, where I actually have the script for this very thing going right here. And that is recommended to, or have any sort of text editor that is more powerful than the regular mods, uh, no, the regular um, text editor from Windows. 
So that's just a pro tip. Otherwise, uh, if you want to do deal with graphics, I'd recommend a free uh, image editing software such as GIMP. Uh, but we'll maybe touch it later on that if we have time. All right, so that's it for the basic introduction. Um, I will mention that for anything later on in the stream, um, we won't be going very in depth with things, but uh, I would recommend going into the Discord, which I will link in the description, so that you can actually get some help and find public resources that are listed there. Uh, it's pretty active, it's grown a lot lately, so it's definitely recommended. Anyway, so why would you even mod this game? What's the, what's the capacity of mods? Well, we're done with this one, so we're going to go back into the <coughs> mods.ini or mod.ini. And I'm going to show you a little mod that I worked on myself. So I'm the author of uh, a mod called Overhaul 7. So the only thing I'm doing right now, I'm just enabling mods. I'm making sure that this is the only um, line besides this one that does not have a semicolon, and then I'm good to launch the game. So I can either launch the game through um, the GOG launcher, or I can just find the executable. So I've added a little um, version control um, down in the lower left corner. That's how you know the mod is activated. But the modder has to do this himself, though. Uh, no biggie. Let's see. Let's just start a new historical game. Um, now let's just go Hazat. My apologies, I need to disable the music <laughs> when I'm doing this uh, kind of live streaming. Anyway, so this is a mod called Overhaul. Uh, so this is the first one I'm going to show you because it's relatively lightweight and it doesn't really do that much. Um, but there is a few things that it does that uh, no other... Um, well, I shouldn't say no other mod, but there, it's not a thing I've seen that, that much. And that is to um, massively expand Byzantium 2, for instance. So the, um, the overhaul mod itself is literally just a combat rebalancing mod with a hardcore economy. So it changes the damaging system, uh, or rather the damage system. You can see here the shield has a hex radius of 5, which is probably not lore accurate. <laughs> but that's the sort of game I wanted to make. I wanted to make a system where shields are really, really good. Also, fighters can now... If I can find my own fighter squadron, where was it again? Here, fighters. And here we can look at this. Fighters can now attack on Byzantium. Which is another thing that 1.5 introduced. It introduced the capability to uh, define unit behaviors much more accurately and more powerful than before. But yeah, the uh, overhaul is pretty similar to vanilla. You can see here I have uh, actual, uh, wait, I'm going to move this away for a second. Actual amphibious transports here. And I can't cross because I'm stupid and I didn't have enough points. But whatever. Um, I recommend trying this out if you want, want something different from um, vanilla. Um, if I go out of this game for a real second. And we go into the mod, overhaul 7, and have a look at what I've actually changed. So I've changed the targeting. Um, I've changed the damage, which is quite different from vanilla. You can see here, if I go into uh, the actual vanilla damage uh, model, Oh, <laughs> it's actually it's actually quite similar. That's right. That's right. Oh no, I I, I misremembered. The, I'm silly. Uh, I I did both of these. So <laughs> yeah, but no worries. 
Uh, essentially, overhaul is just um, something really lightweight and simple. I've just tweaked that files, meaning I've went into the unit.dat here, which controls every single unit. More on that later. And I've simply altered values here to make them exactly as I want. And then uh, I've gotten a pretty interesting game out of it. Anyway, that was it for uh, overhaul. Let's take a little look at Nova. So we'll do the exact same as we did before, but we'll now change the activated mods by just moving the semicolon. Oh, whoa, that's not correct. Be like this. Mm -hmm. Let's just go Lee Halan this time. Now, Nova is a bit more in depth with its changes when it comes to things like graphics, I believe. And you can see here, turn off the music again, that you have some zero move units, which is a feature of uh, Nova. So you can transport these around, but you cannot use them in an attack, which creates some interesting situations where. Um, you have a bunch of powerful units or a bunch of units that you are using, uh, but you are not using them in offense. So let's see here. Oh, well, it's a bit similar than I remembered, but maybe I'm thinking about subversion, probably. But the tech tree. is probably not too different as well. And the... Ah, yeah, the economy is uh, slightly different. You can see here, you can the, the production is... Well, you might not know this, but I from, from memory, I know that this is a bit different than what you'd usually get in vanilla. So Nova does a few things. It rebalances the game. Uh, and... Uh, I would say it's uh, probably overall more refined combat experience if you're into um, playing with other people or just having a long uh, and challenging single-player game that doesn't go overboard. Mm. These are renamed units. The graphics uh, are a bit the same, but the statistics are a bit different. I'd really recommend Nova, by the way, if you're new. Uh, and old. <laughs> really, uh, really a nice mod. And this is the big one. Um, this is actually uh, the most up-to-date mod there is. This is first released a, a couple of days ago. And it's probably the largest active mod to date as well. So, um, if you just take a look. I'm going to start as um, Hawkward this time. Oh yeah, tech tree is already different, you can see here. The rifle leads to machine gun, sniper rifle, and heavy revolver. This is the uh, normal stock galaxy uh, map in Emperor Wars. And it's it's a slightly cut down version from the uh, proof of concept uh, Lost Worlds that was made by Matt, but it's actually um, handcrafted most of it, if not everything. And so the mod author is actually a very avid fan of the books, the um, the universe in which Fading Suns is based on, or Emperor of the Fading Suns is based on, meaning the Fading Suns. And so you have like he's added a planet, Cordeth. Uh, it's probably Ungavorex as well. And he just every sort of unit in the game imaginable. Well, I have to find something for Lee Halan, I guess. I can't see. No, wait. <laughs> How's Hawkwood? Let's go to Delphi then. Like every single unit in the game is, well, in a sense, I haven't played House Hawkwood yet, so forgive me for being a bit slow. There we go. Duke Ivar Hawkwood. He's actually added specific characters from the books. 
uh, and seeded them around the known worlds, giving them sort of unique stats and whatnot. And that just means that if you want to play a mod that is, you know, it's actually sort of based on something that's real, all of this is, of course, a science uh, fiction fantasy, but it's it feels different somehow. Like, the entire known world is such, such a large, coherent universe that you're actually playing in. Sort of like immersion, but for a strategy game. So, um, he spent a lot of time doing technology trees, uh, doing um, very cool things with combat, yeah, very hard unit specializations. You can see here, the Obun diplomatic vessels are given to House Hawker due to their good relations with the Orobun. Uh, or that's a very simplification, I suppose. But uh, and he's added new artworks as well, with the sigil of House Hawkwood, uh, just to showcase how much he actually spent time on this. There are a ton. There are tons of units in here, and I won't spoil Emperor Wars for you that much. I would highly recommend it. But to take away from this, this is a very large passion project that was um, that was. Um, based upon the idea that you can change almost anything in the game. Uh, up to a certain point, of course, but you, he changed the economy, he changed the artwork, he changed the, um, uh, the unit behaviors and functions. There's just so much cool stuff uh, that you can do here, and that is exactly what he did. I just... Uh, spent a couple of hours playtesting uh, this, and I'm actually signed up for one or two multiplayer uh, games. And this is the exact same reason why I'm, I am modding. But yeah, enough about Emperor Wars. It's a fantastic and interesting mod. Um, we can actually see a bit what has been changed, just to show you the scope and scale of what was changed. No, wait a minute. I need to go in here. Emperor Wars. Oh, it's on the top. Right. He actually submitted a small version of the, uh, of the tech tree here, which is uh, pretty handy. There's one thing that he hasn't gotten around to yet, uh, and that is to showcase uh, or add some descriptions to what all these numbers mean. <laughs> you, you, you don't want to be stuck in here trying to figure out what number is what number. But there are tools for that, and it will work itself out uh, if you spend some time setting it up before, first. But just look at how many units there are. Like this doesn't stop. Well, it does eventually. So these are our lore units. Sting is the uh, Hazard Special Forces slash Intelligence Group. Um, probably not uh, word by word, but yeah, there's just so much, and it's based on a real living world. So you have 133 indexes, and I suppose the average number of units are probably one, two to three. So three, four hundred units. Similarly, the technology tree is expanded upon greatly. Stuff like um, face disruptors and blaster cannons. No, blaster cannon probably wasn't the main game, but red lasers, blue lasers. He just went at it. I have to find my way with the script for a second. Yeah. There is another large mod in the making called Hyperion, which I probably don't have access to right now, but that is also in similar scope to Emperor Wars. It's just very huge. It has this uh, larger-than-life goal of, well, um, trying to add so much stuff into the game. So um, there are many different approaches or things that you can find interesting with the game. Uh, just the map editor, which I'll be showcasing right now. And maybe we can just... Um, stay in Emperor Wars for a minute. So if you now launch the map editor, since we have the um, the mods set to Emperor Wars, we'll just go right into that one. 
and then we could just open the galaxy don't you don't have this one but uh, i made this one previously and now i can just move around and let's say i want to add some more fighters to the al malik you do that by simply selecting space fighter selecting correct faction and then you have the type here and i believe the mujahideen is the no wait that was the kurgans <laughs> oops uh maybe the assault star for fighter was it i can't remember but anyway we add a, a few of those make them elite and then you can just keep on doing that same with the planet themselves like you have some pretty powerful utility in just adding stuff wherever you want to uh, or just you can just create a random that you can also define pretty well and accurately to however you want it to so yeah um Map editing is probably the most simple and most fun thing you can do if you're into creating cool and interesting maps. Uh, I certainly have a lot of had a lot of fun with creating handcrafted maps, but you can also um, speed up the process by using the tools available to you, like create random, or you can also create or add fleets, which now just added some. Um, <clears throat> some random rebel fleets around so yeah uh, it doesn't have to take long i'm actually going to just show you real quick if you're not that uh, into modding uh, yet i'm going to say i'm going to disable mods and then i'm going to have a look at the included galaxy galaxies inside the um, the main game and so I could launch the uh, the game executable here, but I'm actually going to just open the map editor. And then we're going to see that galaxy.gal, that's actually the regular game. That's whenever you click play historical. And whenever you, you create random, it will use galaxy.gal as a reference. Now, Dark Ages is a variant for you that is a bit smaller in scope. Still has all the important planets around, like you have Stigmata and the Vow here. But there's only one planet leading into the worlds. Holy Terra only only is one. So this is much more of a, a small skirmish or a dual type galaxy that you can create. You also start with some more stuff here. So this is a great galaxy just to see what's possible and, and just have fun uh, in a very quick manner. You can also actually uh, check out Lost Worlds, which is, yeah. I can't even see the <laughs> like what 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 is this? This is just if you're crazy enough to play a full game of this, all the power to you. I would like to. I just don't have the time. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, absolutely insane. Uh, the number of planets were expanded to around 100. Although I think you'll run you'll run out of uh, space on the screen first. I'm not actually joking. So definitely. Um, there's so much you can do, and you can make it as small or large as you want to. So yeah, I was actually going to show you some advanced generation parameters for uh, random galaxies, but I don't think I have the time. I also don't think it's actually a good idea for now. So what we'll do instead is actually head into modding itself. Like, I've talked a lot about modding right now, but I've not actually showcased how to actually do stuff. So um right now we'll just be creating a new mod and just go at it that way so we'll create a new mod let's call it something like uh, powerful nobles i guess and now in here it's completely empty. So we remember, we have to recreate the folder structure in the vanilla root folder game right here. Uh, but before we recreate anything, we need to figure out what we want to do. So I want to um, create a new unit, uh, make it be very powerful. It's going to be a noble uh, so that it can vote. Uh, it's going to be a spy 
so it can assassinate others on Byzantium, and it's going to also be an officer at the same time. So it's going to be like a noble commander or something. So let's just do that. Um, what did I call it? Powerful nobles. In order to actually um, add units into the game, you need to copy unit.dat to override it later. And notice that I took it from, uh, from the dat folder. Into our mod here, we can simply create a new folder and say dat. Then we copy in or paste in the unit of that. Now, I'm just scrolling down here without thinking of explaining anything, so I'm sorry about that. At the top, there is um, an explanation regarding the unit function. I referred to this earlier. This is essentially how you can add in unit behaviors and combine them as many times as you want with different units. So you can have a noble engineer scepter type of unit that uh, activates upon all the uh, game functions within the game that refer to those types of units. Uh, you can have a naval aircraft carrier that is also a space carrier, for instance, and then you would actually combine these two values. It's a bitwise. Uh, combination so uh, if you had a one and a two you would add those up to uh, three which would be very odd because uh, every single odd number is by definition a non-combat unit while uh, even numbers are not that's just how it works in, with this kind of stuff. We'll get back to this in a little moment. Kind is sort of not used that much anymore, uh, or rather it, it is, but you can still use the much more powerful unit function up here. So unit.dat. Now I've come to the very meat of modding. What's actually sort of what you'll be spending most of your time in, I believe, if you want to create varied units. And um, unit of that, and every other single dat file that you can find in the main game. I actually realized <laughs> I showcased the entire wrong screen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've, I've been talking about all this stuff up here, and I didn't even showcase any of it. So that was my bad. Um, unit dot dat. At the top here is a unit function, and you can combine the values to simply uh, have a tag system. So if you plus 128 with 256, it would be a, a symbiote nester inquisitor, which would be, would be hilarious, by the way. Um, so yeah, this unit function is actually used for a unit. So this is a unit row. So each row is one single unit. And over at the unit function, this is actually the value. Uh, so this is, I have no idea what this is. I do have a, a helper tool to help me out figure out what this is. But in any case, if we would want to add a noble, that would be the things I wanted it to be, which was a noble spy officer. It would be uh, this one, this one, and this one so that would be 2 plus 8 plus 16 so how to embarrass myself on stream right <laughs> so that's 26 which means if we put 26 inside the the uh, the unit function right here then that unit which would be a grappler, would behave as a spy officer and a noble, meaning it would uh, be able to um, assassinate others. Uh, wait a minute. Actually, I almost lied to you, because there's a difference between uh, having the assassination ability, like a spy, and being able to attack on Byzantium 2, the capital of the known worlds. So we actually need to add this one as well. 
which means that it's plus 4, which means that it's actually 30. So 30 is the value we need to look for. Then it will combine 2, 4, 8, and 16. I hope I'm not stupid at math. But we won't actually be using that unit. We will be creating our own. So I'm going to head down to where I know the nobles are. So I'm going to create a new unit. And this is very important. If you want to play with a given galaxy, uh, let's just open up the, um, the main game for a little second. So let's say here that um, on Kish, for instance, here are, um, oh wait, let's see, here. Here are some nobles belonging to House Leon. If I add a unit, the, uh, and I'm not careful where I put it in the ordering, I might end up with a problem. So adding units to the end of a given index uh, is fine, but uh, placing it in between is, uh, means that your entire units will be shifted in a way that you didn't anticipate. So as a precaution, instead of adding it under the nobles right here, I'm instead going to be uh, creating an entirely new unit at the bottom of the file that's going to replicate the behavior and the appearance of the noble. So I'm going to go here, and you can notice we have 90, 91, etc. So we're going to go 92, and just close that off. So that means that since the game doesn't really have seeded any units with 92, uh, you won't find any of these units inside the game galaxy files, but you can build them and whatnot, uh, depending if the data files are correctly set up. So we'll be, do that. we'll be doing that. So the kind um, is essentially a sort of a collection or shortcut of behaviors that is similar to function. So we'll keep that for now because we actually want it to behave as a um, noble, but our name of the noble would be command noble, right? That's what we said. And the short name can be commander, for instance. And let's make it spicy and make this a hover unit which you don't actually have access to a hover commander unit inside the game. And let's increase the movement to 10. So it's pretty good. And the spotting, uh, it can't be too good. So let's just remove the spotter for now. We want dedicated spotters for that. The camo, mm, this guy is a high priority target and he has a uh, difficulty with staying away from combat because everybody loves him or Maybe you disagree and say he should have more agility because he's a smart man. Uh, so let's see, 35 armor, etc. All of these values you can change exa exactly as you want. So I'm just going to remove the ear. I'm going to remove the direct and keep the close, but increase it to 95. So just so we know what you can look for. And in the unit function, we want to keep it at 30. And everything else can pretty much be the same. There's not a big issue with resource costs, with where you can build them. You can build them in the palace. Um, I have a separate video on where to find out uh, what this value is. And you need a regular normal to upgrade them. So the 45 and 0 refers to this guy ah oh, there we go all of these columns are sort of documented inside the unit.dat 
we're going to remove the tech requirements though because we actually want to test if this works or not. And the uh, at the end here, the art is already set up for us because 1.5 actually introduced a new graphical system to the game, which means that you can add uh, custom graphics. I'll show that real quick inside the bin folder. And so uh, before you only had this uh, these bin file bin files uh, that the game would pull its graphics from. But now in 1.5, you can actually add your own um, variations. So you can see, here's, you can see the archangels, which have some um, signifying color schemes to show that it's a bit more powerful. And the blade.bmp is actually the unit that we will be using. So I could probably uh, really quickly showcase uh, editing the, the graphics, but I think it deserves its own guide, actually. Let's see. In any case, blade.bmp is what the, um, the unit we made will actually use, which is correct. We probably could add uh, another graphics in there, but this will suffice. So now we're added a new unit. And we know it will not show up in the maps that already exist, but because we add it at the end of the line, it will be compatible with any galaxy um, that didn't have that data in it already. So that's the strength of doing it this way. Um, of course, you can also just now also edit the map in addition. Or if you want to play a random galaxy, this unit will probably show up as any other unit, since the uh, the uh, map is not actually just um, the map isn't seeded with stuff. But yeah, so now we've created a new unit. It is a hover unit this time, and we can build it in the palace only. So to double check that I've done everything correctly, I'm going into the mod folder, powerful nobles. Then you have that and unit of that, and this is the file we're working on. And actually, to make sure that we have everything correctly set up, I'm going to copy, copy the mod folder, go into mod.ini, and now to add a new mod, we're just going to say powerful uh, nobles version one or zero point one, and mods folder equals. Powerful Nobles. Remember that you also need to disable the other mods that you actually don't want to. And always check it mods on equals one. So now that's that's good. Let's see if we can't get this unit to be recruited. I do love the music. You can't hear it anyway, but uh, it's just too much when I'm trying to <laughs> trying to talk at the same time. So this is the palace. Ooh, it doesn't show up. Why doesn't it show up? Hmm. Did we do everything correctly? Man noble. One forty five. I think so. Ninety one, ninety two. Hmm. No resource requirement should not be an issue per se. 
uh, either I figure this out in like a second or I don't, and then I'll just skip this. But uh, there's probably something very trivial I've forgotten here. Uh, in any case, uh, we'll just just double check right now. We'll just say that there is no unit required for it to be built. It doesn't need to be upgraded or anything. Uh, and ninety one is cargo. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna do one more thing, and then I'm going to uh, do this just to double check that everything works. That is, I'm going to change the name of a unit. Sorry, that's just a habit. <laughs> Militia X Legion, and in the palace, well, we know it works, but it also doesn't work for some reason. Well, no matter. Uh, what I showed you was <laughs> close to perfectly uh, how you would do it. It's just that I've missed something in the speed that I'm trying to do things. But that's all right. Um, I'm... Ooh. Uh -huh. Well, I received a little anonymous tip from... Uh, another one. We'll give him another anonymous tip. <laughs> Thanks, EBM. Uh, that should be it. Right. That should definitely be it. There we go! <laughs> Thank you so much! Yeah, silly mistakes like that happen. Alright. Oh no, we can't build it. But whatever, we can see that it's a horror unit. We can see that it has the updated values. And it has the same artwork that we'd find, but we did just copy the, uh, the line. So that's it for creating a very s super simple mod. Um, you can see here that there's actually an updated interface here for um, for modding, and it's not shown right now. But you can add um, like um, costs now that didn't work before. So many things regarding the economy of the game is actually a bit more up to date right now. And the league, I believe, will be. I'm not sure how exactly they're they're doing it. I did remember we. A discussion on how it worked, but they should be more active, I believe now, which means that the entire um, sort of economy system for modding purposes is more robust, I believe. So, usually when I like to play with mods and stuff, um, I, actually, I'll just really quickly mention the DAT file that you can use to just set the um, set the costs and stuff um you have actual armor values now per city and agility that uh, resists orbital bombardment and collateral damage which is also new in a sense or rather the you can specify them uh you also have um functional credits and credits per turn now and this column here is pretty nice Usually in the game, you can set up uh, build everywhere, which was the 99 column in unit.dat. If I go here real quickly, and let's just find a submarine. That should be the 99, which is actually the owner. Now, the owner, if we find out what, what does the owner mean, you can go up to the top here, and then you can see that 99 is all human, except Symbiote and Mao. So, since this unit is buildable everywhere, 
uh, we can instead say, no, we, we don't actually want these guys to be built there, but we, we you can build them anywhere else that has this enabled. So it sort of makes micromanagement less of an issue in, in very large mods that just want to have the buildings be as they are. Such as Emperor Wars, which, as you can probably remember, was quite large and needed this change. So in addition to just being more powerful, more robust, you also have the ability to sort of reduce micromanagement a bit. Uh, not to mention that the 1.51 version actually brings the automatic um, sleep mode to resources. So in, if you have uh, 40 different cities on a single planet that are producing resources, you don't need to click sleep on every one of them. They just do so automatically, which was... Another thing to say that I've forgotten that, I, uh, that it existed, but if it ever changed back, I would sorely miss this new functionality. Anyway, back to my script. Yeah, uh, probably the one thing I was actually going to mention it, but then I started talking myself into nowhere, is the graphic system. So I actually have uh, some templates that I like to use. You remember in the in the um, the bin folder are kind of many different new artworks that you can just define in the unit of that. Now I have some templates in the Discord that you can use to uh, get this up pretty quickly. Uh, the same applies to FLCs. Um, for reference, if I just go into the game quickly once more, oh no, okay. Let's just do this. Doesn't matter. This image right here is the FLC. Now this image right here, the small one, is the BMP. So FLCs are probably a bit were weird to work with in this day and age, but uh, with the templates, they are actually quite easy to manage. So I won't be showing that right now because I probably don't have time. But um, it does mean you can get a lot of cool unit variants into the game by just um, messing with some uh, 175 by 150 pixel FL, uh, JPEGs and converting them to FLCs to create a pretty cool unit uh, or mod. There is the uh, there's actually a Star Wars mod I think that was in progress. I can't remember by whom, but that was pretty cool. He had like custom graphics and everything. Uh, I should have probably shown that, right? <laughs> so there's so much you can do, and you can create your own game inside this game. Um, and given that it's one of the only few games that allows for orbital space uh, movement and uh, logistics, as well as having several planets worthy of being called hexagonal war games or hexagonal play, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, you can create a world of your own. So, I don't think I have that much more. Uh, this is sort of my first live stream, so it's probably a bit all over the place, but I think I've got the, mo the, the basic gist of it down. Uh, hopefully we can take something useful out of this. I'll actually leave the last minutes up to um, questions, and if everything checks out, I'll just briefly mention what I'd recommend starting with. Uh, instead of having to listening to me all day. So, has there been any questions until now, Andrew? I haven't looked at the stream uh, at all. Yeah, Zeno, that was great. Uh, yes, a number of questions. Got one from Twitch. Where do you find the mods? Oh, right. Maybe I should just share the Discord link, as I said, but I completely forgot about that. So, I have a Discord um, uh, that's been up for a few years now. Let's see, server settings, invitations. Uh, yeah, in that. I just shared Actually. the Discord link in chat. Oh, thank you. So anyone who's not in there can jump in. That link will be good for seven days. And you can always ask us in chat if you tune into this VOD later. We can get you a new link. 
Um, Charlotte noted uh, on YouTube noted that uh, the some of the Emperor War ship models looked like they're from Homeworld 2. So we need to look into that. I didn't think they were. But we'll find out from the uh, from the creator. I was inclined mm -hmm. towards creating. We had a quick discussion on combat abilities for nobles and martial arts. So now I want to create units that use each of the different Fading Suns martial arts, Mantok. Iron Heel and so forth, and give them special abilities accordingly. Uh, Charlotte came up with the idea that to give the uh, nobles uh, air attacks, they would have psychic abilities to blind the pilots, hmm. which I much enjoyed. Charlotte uh, she... says she would like to see a stream by changing the art. Yeah. Uh, that's probably not a bad idea because it's probably one of the slightly finicky parts if you're not used to it. Uh, it's pretty automatic for me at the moment, but it wasn't when I started at all. So that's something I'd have to consider. Maybe just a video as well. Yep. Probably is. Doesn't have to be live, can be pre recorded. Uh, let's talk a little about some of the funnest things, most fun things you enjoy modding in the game. Some of the things that are unique to this. So, for instance, the church, how often it prescribes technologies. What are some of the other fun things you can mod about the church itself? Well, it's, uh, I can't remember at the moment, but since you can define unit behaviors, you can actually set up multiple inquisitors. So you can have like varying degrees of inquisitor hunting you down with different units. Like you might have the Avestites come at you with flame guns. Or maybe they have some insane psychers uh, in your mod, right? So you have this variance um, or variation set up so you can sort of um, get a glimpse into what the AI does uh, with different kinds of units. So that to me is pretty cool that I can just say that the church is larger and it would actually uh, respond to you uh, with more stuff from the lore. Uh, and when you when you sort of um, get out a tech prescribed, you have to figure out okay, how far away am I from Holy Terra? If you are the Azat, maybe try to play it cool. But if you're the Kados and you have to just worry about Demole, which is probably also pretty heavily garrisoned, um, you could probably get away with a bit more, maybe. Excellent, excellent. And uh, let's talk about um, how you change the building. A lot of folks have looked to modifying the engineers. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. That was one of the first mods uh, that was put out uh, due to heavy requests. And I actually have a video about this uh, in my other channel. Uh, essentially, if I have the stream open right now, it is very similar to just uh, doing this. And instead of setting the um, the engineer to be buildable, in everywhere you would actually go into str build uh, and find the specific buildings that you want to change uh, it to be built to so this is actually what i what i did in that video i found out the indexes of the of the buildings and this one is always zero so i usually just like to do this whenever i try to figure out what things are because now Zero's palace, I always know that. And then uh, you would do this, zero. You would do find the uh, next city that you want. I think it was the shield, which is 17. Notice I, I did just delete the bunch of stuff so that the, the, um, the signifiers of what index I'm on in Notepad++ just shows me right on top. Uh, 17, and did I miss something? I did say church, didn't I? Yeah, I probably did. So 1 and 17, is that correct? Palace, church, and shield. Yeah, that should be correct. So now I've actually, <laughs> I've actually um, changed the, um, the stuff correctly, except I need to do this as well, if I remember correctly so that the artwork is not shifted artificially into the wrong index. And then I can just launch the game again. 
since we're still playing with the mod. There's the engineer, but it was already buildable there from the start, so... Hmm. Yet another mistake again? Wait a minute. Yeah, I did another mistake, because I tried to go faster than uh, what I'm capable of. Hmm. Well, who knows what the problem is now, but this is very close to the correct uh, solution. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, actually, I changed the owner columns instead of the, um, of the buildings. So what you need to do is just move that over there, and this should work. Engineer is not buildable in the fort. That's good. Is it buildable in the factory? No. Shield? Yes. Excellent. Arch? Yes. Palace? Yes. Lab? No. Ta -da! Excellent. Good job. So WDM, going back to the idea of psychic attacks on the pilot, said doing going full Vader on the pilot would be cool in youtube charlotte raises a very interesting question on youtube how about a segment on modding the ai mm. yeah, yeah there's I, not I, much you can mod on the ai right now no there are well part of the things that i world sorry part of the thing i find very interesting about efs is actually trying to hack the game now in 1.4 you really had to hack the game uh, but in 1.5, you sort of you're brought up a level in which the ways you hack the game are more powerful when you get it right. One of the things that I've always wondered is uh, how can you make the AI be more compatible with your data set? Of course, the 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 best solution is to just have a robust AI that can always deal with any problems. But uh, definitely, uh, Charlotte, I see sort of a need or interest in. Uh, trying to craft a good single-player experience, what can the AI deal with? Now, I, for instance, know that if you set up the... Oops, time's up, but stop that for a second. Um, if you set up the data files so that the AI can build militia, and it will take them a long while to get uh, technologies that would allow them to build regular units, well, that means that you'll just end up with hundreds, hundreds of thousands of militias in the known worlds, right? Or hundreds of thousands is a bit much, but you know what I mean. Instead, what you can do is to add, and this is something that was introduced in 1.5, I believe. You can add specific units to the AI only. So if you see here with the special column right here, new for human versus AI controlled houses. Now you can set up the um, so that it's only human controlled, so you, only you can build those, and I actually have found very specific uses for those, uh, or just human controlled houses um, as a general rule, so you don't have to create five separate ones, and then the AI only, which is where you can set up uh, faster unit buildings, or you can set up uh, so that uh, it has um, access to units faster than uh, other technologies so this way you can uh, you can sort of bridge the discrepancy between what the human is capable of doing and what the ai will inevitably struggle with so this is this is just one of the few things that i uh, that i think needs some attention and some thought uh, but there's definitely a lot of cool stuff that can be done uh, to make the ai cope in single player excellent yeah a lot of the specific ai behaviors um are hard coded so not easy to mod but yeah like uh Zeno sewing showing you can uh fake it make it do cool mm. things and actually that would be a good 
um, segment, a good video on how to cre create specific behaviors the way that Zeno was showing here. All right. That's uh, been well over an hour on this. Uh, thanks to everyone who tuned in. Zeno, thank you very much for all the info. Thank you. I hope it wasn't too much jumbling. <laughs> Great stream. And remember, if you want to mod other games too, this is there are similarities here to others. So frankly, I think the EFS tools are especially easy to use these days. So you might want to start by creating your own galaxy using the galaxy editing tools and then go from there. So again, thank you, Zeno. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And we'll Thanks for announce... having me on that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we'll maybe announce some more of these. All right, Zeno, give me the last word. Um, well, I'm not a very creative type, so I just want to say thank you so much for um, for uh, joining the stream. If any of you guys have any questions and you want to learn more about modding and, and, and not to mention find resources, I heavily suggest um, joining the Discord. Uh, tons of people there are active, and it, it keeps growing in both numbers and activity by the day. There's multiplayer games and lots of stuff happening. So if you want to go into modding here, I suggest the Discord. All right. Take care, everybody.